United States, online learning is growing at 30% annually, and 26 of our states have state virtual schools. An example is in Georgia, where there are 440 high schools and only 88 physics teachers qualified in the state to teach. So with those kinds of gaps, how do we bring every single student the high quality math and physics teachers, science teachers that are needed statewide? So they created the Georgia Virtual School Program to offer advanced placement, to offer math, science, foreign languages, even online Chinese courses as well as credit recovery and remediation for students in those core courses. And they're finding that the students that are taking classes online are able to access a whole new distribution model of quality teachers who don't live in their area using the broadband technology, but also using those online digital resources to help support them. And Georgia has end of course exams. The results show that the students taking the online courses are scoring 10 to 20 points higher overall in each of the subjects compared to the traditional school students. Now one of the big trends that we're seeing, and this is true in higher education as well as in K-12 education, is the use of what we call hybrid or blended learning environments. And we like to think of that as the best of both worlds. And that's when you take the digital curriculum, you take teachers that are trained to teach online, and you use um, classroom time and space differently, where students come together, they're still using technology in terms of accessing their course materials, but it allows customization of the coursework. It means that students that need less instructional support can move faster. They can move through the materials. They're not getting bored. Um, they can learn more. They can dig deeper into the resources. With the students that might be struggling with a particular lesson, and they, these may be challenged students, these may be gifted students that are just having a hard time with one or two concepts, can spend more time and get more instructional support. But the whole idea of customization and personalization and having every student not just limited to one textbook or the speed that one teacher can do a lecture or an assignment or a project, that students can move across this continuum in a blended learning environment where you're using online resources, online assessments, online project collaboration so students can take that both informally outside of the classroom and deal with informal instruction or laboratory experiments while they're face to face um, really does create new learning opportunities and a whole new environment that uh, again is taking advantage of the technology. It's not about the technology but the broadband is the key enabler to be able to use a whole new uh, distribution and delivery model for education. Yeah, I mentioned the World Future Society has a point pointed out that the top 10 breakthroughs that will transform life as we know it in the next 20 to 30 years, it's a list of uh, 10 things including alternative energy, desalination of water, precision farming, things that are going to change fundamentally the way people in developing nations as well as developed nations interact and succeed in the global economy. One item related to education on the list is virtual education. And it is going to fundamentally shift what students have access and what a world-class education looks like. And it, it is about using broadband technology, mobile computing, online learning, providing access to the best teachers no matter where they are in the country, in the world, and matching those up with students in areas that may have never had access to education. Uh, some examples that we're seeing right now of this in China has digitized their entire K-12 content and curriculum. They're ramping this up. They're training master teachers to teach online. And they estimate in China, we did an international survey, that in 10 years, they want to reach 100 million more students with a world-class education through online learning. It's fundamentally going to shift in countries like Korea, China, all across uh, countries in Africa, in the Middle East, uh, as well as Europe, and we're seeing this now. Um, the future is now. It's, it's not in 10 or 20 years, but more and more students are having access to a high-quality education through online learning and excellent teachers.